You know what the problem is in today's church is we've become too lazy, we become too slothful, we become too compromised, and we become too comfortable. We're willing to spend more time on social media, Netflix, and waiting in line at your local Burger King or McDonald's for 15 minutes because there's a bunch of people there and you're hungry or, or waiting in line at Best Buy overnight um, for, for an upgrade uh, iPhone or Android. Um, we're, we're, we're willing to wait um, you know, 45 minutes for our food to come out at the restaurant, but how be it that we can't wait on God? How is it that we go to church and we go in there um, not expecting God to move? It's like we go, we go in there, we just go for entertainment. We just go uh, to find a happy place for two hours and, and, and hope that uh, nothing is stirred inside of our soul, that, that nobody preaches on us and that nobody would touch on something that we're doing wrong in our life because heaven forbid, heaven forbid that we get just a tiny bit uncomfortable. Heaven forbid that God would want to speak to us and ask us to change. Heaven forbid that we would feel a little conviction in our heart and the Holy Spirit would come and ask us or tell us that this is what you're doing wrong. Heaven forbid that that would happen because when we go to church now, we just go to church expecting that we will get our feels, we'll get our feel good moment and, and the pastor would say a few, com few comforting words to us about how good God is and we'll shout amen. Yes, God is good and uh, I love you Jesus and you're my everything and be the the center of my world God but when when we leave that place Jesus is far from the center of your world Jesus is not even on the back burner Jesus isn't even close to you at all Jesus isn't isn't even residing in your heart in your mind in your vessel Jesus isn't residing residing in your home or on the workplace Jesus is Jesus isn't what you're looking at what you're meditating on or who you praying to we're praying to other gods today saints we're praying to worshiping other gods we're worshiping the gods of Facebook and the gods of Netflix and the gods of Hulu and the gods of TikTok. We're placing these things on, on a shelf and they're becoming us in an idol and they're bringing us down so bad and, and our eyes are closed because we can't realize that we are following after things of the world more than we're following after the things of God. Come on somebody. It's time for the church to rise up. It's time for the church to raise a standard. It's time for the church to walk in newness of life. The Bible says that we are supposed to renew our mind by the tra transform our mind by renewing our mind in God. God will transform the way you think. God will transform the way you walk. God will transform the way you talk. Come on, somebody. But God's not going to force this down your throat today. God is asking that you want to make the change. God is act asking that you uh, have an expectancy in your heart to change, that you desire Him, that you fall in love with Him, that you pursue Him, and that you pursue the Word. When we begin to get closer to God, uh, what happens is the world becomes begins to get further away. But when we get so close to the world, God gets pushed further away. God is calling you guys today to get close to Him so He can tell you tell you secrets of, of His kingdom and, and bring you in close to Him and give you that, that spiritual hug and you can, you can feel that joy unspeakable and full of glory that you can feel that mercy and grace and forgiveness. You don't have to live... Uh, a discomforted life. You don't have to live down in defeat. The devil wants you to live defeated. I'm telling you this morning, do not allow the devil to defeat you. The devil loves it when we go to church. I say it again, the devil loves it when we go to a church that doesn't have any spirit moving, that we're not crying out to God. The devil doesn't mind at all if you're just throwing up a, a hallelujah, amen, if it has no meaning behind it. The devil don't mind if you pray because he knows that your prayers are worthless and they're empty. And I'm not I'm not telling you guys that you know you shouldn't pray or or you guys have crappy prayers. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying the devil just loves it when he knows that we're not on fire for God because we don't have the fire of God. Hallelujah. The devil would like us to think that um we that he, he is powerless and he has no control over our life. The devil would like to influence the church that we shouldn't talk about him and that we, we should stay hush-hush about the devil. The devil wants us to believe that the, the devil shouldn't be involved in the church. Well, I'm telling you today, the devil is very involved in the church. And if you want me to get real with you, the devil is trying to work on your very mind, your very heart, your very soul. 
Hallelujah. The devil is trying to distract you this morning from the things of God. He woke you up this morning telling you that you're going to have a bad day before your day even begun. Before you got your, your feet out of bed, you already was whooped by the devil because you didn't have enough spirit and you didn't you you didn't pray enough the night before. You you were watching some worldly stuff on Netflix or listening some some nasty crap on the music stations and filling your head and, and creating a powerful environment for the devil. So, so when you wake up, that's what you're going to feel. You're going to feel the action after effects. It's just like when you get drunk, sometimes you wake up and you feel the after effects when a person drinks because they be they become drunk and 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 you wake up and you don't feel good, you just don't feel right. You you stumble because that because it's what you let inside. It's the things that you let inside your your mind and your heart, the things that you see and and we let we let captivate our souls and in our lives. I'm telling you tonight, I'm telling you today, guys, we got to be ready. We got to change our motives. We got to change our mind. We got to realize that there is a war going on. There is a spiritual war going on. We must be ready. Praise God. When we walk into that church, we must come with expectancy in our heart. How many walk into the hospital or the emergency room and on the way there, you're like, well, we're not going to get anything. We're just going to go the fun of, for the fun of it. I just want to go and see the nurses. I just I just want to go and sign my name on this paper. I just want to go see the tools that the doctors use. I just I just feel like a, so, uh, feel like getting a needle in my arm. I just want to go. I just want to go so uh, I can get some amoxicillin because I like the taste. And I, I just want to go because I I want an x-ray because I, I think x-rays are cool no when you go to the doctors what what happens when you when you go to the doctor you're expecting that the doctor is going to do something to help you he's you're expecting the doctor is going to provide some medication that's going to that's going to heal you we expect that the doctor has the answer so as christians when why do we walk into the church with the almighty god the creator of this world the one that created your heart mind soul and every organ and every blood cell in your body and and we don't have expectancy see that he can touch us that he can heal us that he can move us hallelujah we just come to church and we sit there we sit on god's spirit we sit on the blood of jesus we sit on the move of god and god's god's wanting to move so strong in the church but we won't allow and we have we put up a barricade uh, from allowing god's spirit to move because we have blocked out the belief that he can and we're so full of junk that we have no room for god come on somebody Somebody pick up the cross this morning and start following him. Somebody make up in their mind that I'm going to serve Jesus and Jesus only. Somebody somebody make up in their mind that I'm going to tear down these gods in my life that's been bringing me down, that's bringing me havoc, that's, in, that's bringing my mind darkness and my heart darkness and bringing hate and sin into my life. Jesus won't... Jesus won't work if, if you're just living a sinful life and you're full of sin. Jesus isn't going to come in if you won't allow him to clean up your act hallelujah jesus wants to move in your life this morning but will you let him will you open up your hands and and in and, and, and expectancy that god has something great for you or or will you continue in sin and continue in darkness and consent continue being a naysayer and negative nancy and continue the life that you live just thinking that this is it this is not it god has a plan for you god has so much in store for you god has given you gifts um that you could never never believe hallelujah god has given us life god wants us to live life more abundantly hallelujah god it wasn't meant for us to go around walking with our heads hung down defeated hallelujah we're supposed to wake up and defeat the enemy when i wake up in the morning i, I want my want some of my first thoughts to be on jesus but besides that i want to be in a warful battle staged mind where i know devil you're going to come up against me with every weapon that you have. But guess what, devil? The Bible said, Jesus said that no weapon form may prosper because I have the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords on my side. And if I have the creator of this world, the very person that created you, devil, I know that I have the power to win. I know that I, I know, and I know when I've read the end of the book that we win and there's no power in hell that can defeat the power of God. Praise God. Somebody needs to rise up rise up hallelujah we are an army you are a part of a beautiful strong army of the lord let's act like soldiers let's not act like de defeated soldiers but victorious we are victorious in the name of the lord somebody rise up and act victorious this morning somebody claim to be victorious this morning we are on the battlefield of war right now somebody rise up and claim claim that we have the strength and the weapons for this war somebody declare that i am a winner i am not defeated i am not worthless 
Hallelujah. Somebody just praise the Lord this morning for he is worthy of all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. Hallelujah. Jesus is so good. Just have a conversation with him today. If nothing else, invite him into your heart, invite him into your mind. Ask God's Holy Spirit to come and wreck your life. God will wreck your life in a good way. God, the closer we draw to God, the more that we will feel what God wants us to do, the more we read our Bible, pray and fast, God will start to shed things off of our mind and hearts and lives that shouldn't be there. He'll He'll start giving us a, a distaste for things that were never meant to be in our life. I'm telling you, this is the truth, guys. I, I'm just preaching the truth this morning. God will come and wreck your life if you allow him. I am begging you this morning to come and have God do some construction in areas of your life that have been needed it for such a long time. Have God come through with a wrecking ball and just destroy sin and, and destroy darkness and destroy sickness. We are never meant to be a sick people. We are never meant to be discouraged. Jesus, Jesus, that's not Jesus' plan, but come and wreck, come and wreck us, God. Come and transform us, God. Come and renew us, God. In Jesus' name, hallelujah.